Hello, c'est Jean-Marc from Millibox, and today we are talking about uh, correlation between um, simulation data and, and OTA measurement. And that helps us, you know, give credibility to the uh, test setup. You know, if you can get that correlation, if you have known good simulated data and, and you exercise your OTA setup, with the same DUT and get the same uh, matching result, uh, that gives a lot of confidence to your uh, overall uh, test methodology, right? So, so we're going to make an experiment in um, in W band, you know, um, a WR10 between uh, 75 gigahertz and 110 gigahertz, and then we're going to repeat that experiment in D band. Uh, between 110 gigahertz and 170 gigahertz um, with two different uh, DUT, I mean, two different um, uh, known uh, standard gain horn. And we're going to see if our setup uh, correlate well enough to our uh, simulation data that we got from the DUT manufacturer. So here I have a gimbal for 300E. Uh, that's the, 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 the positioner where you can mount the uh, irrelevant um, frequency extenders, in our case, the WR10 frequency extender. And here we have our DUT, which in our case is the standard gain horn uh, of 23 dBi. On this, on this side, we have our um, capture that's made by a frequency extender. That's a receiver. It will take our, uh, it takes a WR10 uh, input and give it to the VNA. So we're going to see, uh, we're going to see the trace. So basically what we are going to do here is a uh, HV plot, which is called, you know, HE, you know, plot. That's the typical plot that you get from a uh, um, uh, standard uh, gain horn uh, data sheet together. We're going to do that at 75 gigahertz. Uh, from minus 90 degree to uh, uh, 90 degree, and with a resolution of uh, two degrees. So here we can proceed with the uh, with the plot, and we're gonna check how it matched the uh, data that we have uh, from the uh, the DUT in that case manufacturer, which is. Uh, 23 dBi uh, standard uh, gain horn. So here our plot is progressing along the uh, uh, azimuth uh, plane. So that's our edge uh, sweep. We're doing it from minus 90 degree to plus 90 degree uh, in azimuth at uh, two degree of resolution. We could have done like a lower resolution if we want it down to port one with this setup. Um, and now we are going to do the V-plane. Okay, so here the uh, the plot is complete. And then then we're gonna check the what the manufacturer is is saying in the same condition. So here we have the data sheet. We have a very good, very good match, very good correlation at this point. So it looks a little bit like uh, this. What I'm trying to check is those are the points, you know, the peaks and the uh, and and the dips. Uh, you know, all, all those. I'm trying to see if they completely match the simulated data from the manufacturer and the uh, OTA measured data that we just did with our setup. Now, those being a great match, I have a lot of confidence about my setup. And now if I put my DUT, my unknown entity, instead of the standard uh, gain horn, for which I have the data sheet, then I can, I can measure my, my DUT with confidence. And then I may have some simulated data about my DUT, or I may not have. But I have a great uh, confidence that they should match. So now we are repeating the same approach, but ninety two and uh, ninety two point five because that's what uh, that's the data that we have from the the manufacturer data sheet. 
And here again, we are seeing a strong, um, very strong correlation. Uh, we see those one, two, three, four pumps, one, two, three, four, and then uh, the deep. But that's past 90 degrees, so we're not testing there. Um, and then we see that uh, we see that uh, hump here, the hump there. So we we can see those uh, exactly at the right frequency, at the right uh, magnitude. So uh, that gives us a lot of confidence about our setup uh, at this point. We can, of course, uh, repeat that yet again with the next data that we have 110. And they all uh, they all slightly different. We can recognize here we have like one, two, three, four, five pumps. Um, so we're gonna check uh, how it looks, and that's what we have uh, here. We have a very good, uh, very good match again. In terms of uh, completed here, we have at we're at twenty four point three. It's about twenty four point three, and then we have one, two, three, four, five hums. Like one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so at this point we've changed the uh, the setup to a D band. Uh, setup. So D band is, as you know, 110, 270 gigahertz. And we're going to do the same thing and, and see if we have a good correlation uh, with um, a good correlation with the data sheet from the manufacturer. Here we have a 20 dBi uh, standard gain horn uh, from Air Event as well. And we're going to measure it and see how that matched the data sheet from uh, the manufacturer. So as previously, we're doing uh we're doing an HB plot uh interactive so minus 90 degree to 90 degree is a two degree step and uh, that's for 20 dbi in the band and we are going to plot these at 140 gigahertz 140. all right So now our sweep HV sweep is complete, and then we're gonna compare with the uh, the data sheet like I suggested before. So this is uh, this is what we're supposed to get at one forty, and this is what we got. I'm trying to align it a little bit. Oh, is it's align already? Nearly. All right, but like this. Again, we have a strong correlation is like 20 to 20. Uh, this is about eight. It's about eight. It's uh, about four. Here you see the, the matching of the loops up to uh, 90 degree. So here also we have, a, we have a strong correlation. And we can play back the file that we just captured for 170 gigahertz, and then we're gonna check again. But so far, so good. Everything is matching perfectly. So yet again, uh, we are going to look at our files. So what the uh, manufacturer is saying, 170, we see one, two, three, four, four clearly identified uh, lobes, clearly uh, isolated uh, between them. And... Uh, can compare the points, 60 degree, get a point of minus 10. So minus 10 here at 60 degree. It's pretty good correlation once again. So that's uh, that That really shows that our, our over the year setup is basically capturing what the simulated data predicted, right? So there's a, uh, there is an accordance, there is, a, there is an agreement uh, between the simulated data and the OTA captured uh, data in, in our case. So those, uh, those um, experiments, you know, we went from 75 gigahertz all the way to 170 gigahertz with the, in, in W band and in D band. And we gain, we gain strong confidence that uh, the setup behind me is really uh, matching what the manufacturer simulation data is saying. And going forward, that means that when I'm going to move to test my own DUT uh, instead of a reference DUT, 
I'm, I'm, I'm going to have a full confidence that whatever result I can get from the uh, from the OTA data is going to have a strong correlation with my previous simulated data. There's discrepancy. That's where I want to do an investigation and start debugging and start seeing what's going on. Uh, simulation is always like rosy and round and smooth and everything, whereas the measured data is always uh, more real, more harsh and and, uh, and less uh, forgiving. So that's that's where we really go deep into the design and uh, and 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 the, the the match between the real world and the simulated world. I think it was very important to give you this uh, perspective about how we um, gain confidence, how we know that our setup is complete and 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 working. Thank you for watching and talk to you later.